sure do. $38.90. Okay, I warned you, one drip and you're out. Oh, come on! Hi folks, I'm Ignati Vishnevetsky. And I'm Alex Dowd. Today we're talking about the nominees for Best Supporting Actor. Welcome to a very special Oscar edition of Film Club. All right, you ready for a pop quiz? Tell me all the nominees, Best Supporting Actor. Okay, Richard Jenkins, The Shape of Water. Willem Dafoe. The Florida Project, Christopher Plummer replacing Kevin Spacey in All the Money in the World, and two of the actors from Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Woody Harrelson and Sam Rockwell. Now, who do you think is uh, is kind of the most deserving of those? Because I I, I I suspect we have the same um, we have the same pick for that. Defoe. Yeah. Oh, Defoe it's always terrific in the Florida obviously Project. Defoe. I I really think that this is like a this might be the best performance he's ever given. And part of that is that it's just such an ordinary performance in a lot of ways. He's playing a very ordinary guy and he's doing it very convincingly in a cast of mostly unknowns and non-professionals. Like a chameleon, he just fits into that. And it's just this so much paternal decency from him in this performance. And he does just this, this brilliant job. He's play, he plays Bobby, the manager of uh, the central location of the Florida Project, uh, the Magic Castle, I believe it's called. This motel outside of Orlando, basically, that's um, styled to to sort of... <laughs> Disneyland knockoff. Right, exactly, yep. And he sort of runs it, and it's his job to kind of run around the property and put out fires and just sort of deal with these unruly tenants that he has. Mm -hmm. And it's just this beautiful balancing act between exasperation and affection, you know? Because so much of his time is spent dealing with, with these troublemaking kids and tenants that don't pay their rent and are constantly on him about fixing things. So he's exasperated most of the time, but he has this deep affection that Defoe almost never comes out and says. It's just it just colors his performance, you know? He does so much with just looks in this movie. The, the notes of exasperation, I think, are really what make it because there's a, there's a kind of reluctance to be this father figure to, to various tenants and their kids. And then it ultimately, you know, a, the basic decency of this character always gets, gets the better of him. Yeah. And it's, it's basically a portrayal of a man sometimes struggling with, you could say, with his better angels. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also think he's kind of a proxy for Sean Baker, mm -hmm. in a sense, that his attitude is sort of the movie's attitude towards these characters. It is kind of exasperated with them and, and with what they're doing constantly in this film, the trouble they're getting into, but it has this deep love and compassion for them too. And what's interesting is all the other nominees here are, you could, call them in some ways legacy nominations, you know? Like yeah. Sam Rockwell has been an interesting actor for a very, his first very nomination, long time. It is, it yeah. He's yeah. been an interesting actor for a very long time. I don't know if Three Billboards is the performance of his that should have been nominated. No, I, I usually love him, to be honest. I think that Rockwell tends to improve almost everything he's in with his energy, and I do think that this is not one of his strongest performances. Some of that is in the writing, just that that character is inconsistent in some ways, and I also think that the movie can't decide if it wants to take him seriously or if it wants him to be a bumbling, you know, fifeish idiot. Honestly, I prefer Rockwell when he's playing him as a bumbling idiot. Yeah. And then you've got, you've got Harrelson. Mm -hmm. Who's been better elsewhere, too. And yeah. Christopher Plummer, who I think is really, yeah, is being nominated for not being Kevin Spacey. That is 100% a nomination for being like, yes, I will come in <laughs> and do this very quickly <laughs> and fill the void left by Kevin Spacey at the center of this movie. I mean, he is good. He is the best thing about it, mm -hmm. I will say. That was going to be a stunt performance, I think. And it was my understanding that, he, that Plummer was always Ridley Scott's first he was. choice to play the role because he looks like Jack right. Paul Gatti. He does not shy away from the fact that this guy was a slime ball, but he also makes at least his logic sound reasonable mm -hmm. in some respects, which I think does take some talent. Um, what about Richard Jenkins? What do you think of him? Richard Jenkins, I like in everything. I do. Again, this is so many of these performances strike me as just good work by actors who generally put in this amount of good work. Yeah. It's like so many other good supporting performances from, from Richard Jenkins. Except uh, Defoe. Defoe is at the top of his game, I think. I, I don't know if it's Defoe's greatest performance because I love Willem Defoe in just about everything, but I think it allows him to open up a side of him that you very, very rarely see in his roles. It, yeah. it's, it's a very, because he is actually very good at playing warm, affectionate characters. And the, the fact that he basically is, is doing that for the entire film, it shows a different side of him. I think there's a reason why that's the performance that we want to talk about. Right. Not, <laughs> not any of these others, yeah. which, are, which are fine. Well, who do you think will win? I'm not sure, actually. I'd, lo I'd love to believe that it's going to be Willem Dafoe, mm -hmm. but I have a feeling it's going to be, like, it's going to be Harrelson or Sam Rockwell. I think it'll be Rockwell. I think that he's won the, uh, 
the most precursors at this point. Again, you can't that can't always trust that, especially with the changing makeup of the academy. Mm -hmm. But I think that the momentum is behind Rockwell at this point. Where's Denise Watson? Denise Watson's in the clank. On what charge? Possession. Of what? Two marijuana cigarettes. Big ones. When's the bail hearing? I asked the judge not to give her bail on account of her previous marijuana violations, and the judge said, sure. 